Hi there, welcome to Revelation TV and our programme today is Get Well, Stay Well. My name is Cyrus Fernando and once again delighted to be joined by Felicity. How are you? Hello there, Cy, and I'm really excited because I'm off to America to the Integrated Health Cure to Cancer Conference, which is in San Diego next month. So I'm going to be meeting up with a lot of old colleagues and friends and um, the doctors who've treated me in the past. And so I shall be bringing back all the very latest information for our viewers. How exciting. I, and I presume also you'll probably be meeting some of the viewers that we've, sh um, some of the doctors, shall we say, that we've shown on their clips on our, sh on our In program. In fact, the doctor who's going to be featured today is a lovely lady called Lee Connealy. And I'm going to be meeting with her and working with her. And she's also working with Dr. Francisco Contreras, who actually got me well 11 years ago from pancreatic cancer and who I have the great honor of introducing. Uh, he's doing the main talk on the Sunday morning and I've been given a quarter of an hour to speak and say what it has done for me and how I'm now spreading the word. So it's really, really exciting. Today's subject is alternative approach to cancer. Just for well, some- Well, actually, yeah. it's the integrative approach and that's important because it's where we integrate the best of the orthodox, so the surgery, and uh, the best of the orthodox, sometimes we need chemotherapy, sometimes we need a little radiation, but doing it together with the natural things. So it's putting it all together. And this is the new medicine. This is the way things are moving. Uh, there's a terrific opening up now of information. And it's really exciting to be at the very forefront of that. So I wanted our viewers on Revelation to really know what the latest information is and that's why I'm off to America. Now, Revelation TV constantly has new viewers and they might not be familiar with your story. Um, would you like to just cover that briefly? Yeah, sure. Well, um, I was a British Red Cross nurse and I also worked in the Houses of Parliament. So I, had an, I began to understand a little bit about politics and how things work, how big business works and the government lobbies. Um, I then had three beautiful children, went to live back home in Jersey and uh, we bought an old farmhouse and sadly the uh, well water had been contaminated with a lot of fertilizers and chemicals that are now put on the land to grow tomatoes and potatoes which Jersey is famous for. So um, sadly we had a big battle with uh, cancer from that and I lost a beautiful daughter who was diagnosed on her 18th birthday, went through all the chemo, the radiation, uh, like a, a lamb to the slaughter and died within two years. So I began to have to rethink all my orthodox views about everything. Um, I started reading a lot, I started researching, I went and trained in London, in America, in South Africa, in New Zealand, Australia. I just went, I really went for it because I had two other children and one of them had been affected as well, but luckily the thing was encapsulated and removed. But I mean, what a wake up call. I had the biggest wake up call on earth. And um, I was a Christian. I uh, came, I, I went, started training in ministry. And then I realized that, you know, God wants us to be in abundant health. He said in Genesis 1, 29 and 30, what we should be living on. We've come far from that with our processed chemical uh, foods and the, uh, in fact, I wouldn't even spell it F-O-O-D, it's P-H-U-D, you know, because it's chemical food that people are buying. And of course, I was a busy young mother. I was into all these things as well. I had a microwave oven and I thought, you know, it was great. Uh, how wonderful all these modern inventions and the sort of, you know, the, the uh, processed pies and things. And I had come away from eating the good old carrots, apples, onions, garlic, which of course is now what um, has got me well and what is getting thousands of people well when we come back to the natural diet. You mentioned about the microwavable oven. Um, what are the dangers? Well, you want to throw it out. I mean, they are literally, um, I thought it was a wonderful thing. I thought it was going to be, you know, such a quick way, especially doing jacket potatoes, which I used to do because you do them very quickly. But uh, the microwave, um, I mean, I'm not saying this, but I'm, I followed the research and the research shows that a lot of them leak. And of course, when you irradiate food, as I now know, 
you kill all the living enzymes. And it's the living enzymes that our cells need to actually keep the body healthy because our organs are all built up from the cells. So the first thing I teach people is really the anatomy of the cell, how important all those cells are. They need electricity, they need oxygen, they need hydrogen. And when we cook food, uh, we certainly uh, destroy a lot of that. We destroy a lot of this, say, natural vitamin C. Um, the natural goodness in the food is destroyed with cooking. And uh, of course, when we irradiate it, we really finished it off. So I learned the hard way, and um, it's just amazing to be able to be here on Revelation TV and to spread the information to so many people, because this is true. I, th um, I think today's program is going to be valuable to all our viewers, because not only are we going to be discussing the treatment of cancer, but also the prevention of cancer as well. Absolutely. That's my passion, you know, having lost a beautiful 18-year-old daughter. My passion is um, to teach people prevention so that they don't get it in the first place. Prevention is so much easier than cure. And how important is education that we're aware of what's going on? Well, it's vital and it should be taught in all our schools. You know, even if you go to the top uh, hospitals in England, um, unfortunately, uh, the dietitians you'll see that the dietitians are giving the patients the wrong food in the hospitals. And it's quite incredible that, um, you know, the... Uh, several of the hospitals, as Philip Day was saying the other day, um, are t serving burgers and uh, all kinds of strange, medica uh, strange um, rubbishy foods. Okay, well, let's take a look at our first clip that we have prepared for today. This is the integrative approach to cancer. Hello everyone, welcome to our first video in our series on integrative and alternative approaches to cancer. I'm Jean Swan, host of the Cure to Cancer Summit and founding partner of Integrated Health International. And we are excited about bringing this information into the hands of millions of people around the world. We have a three-part educational video series for you and we're beginning today with Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally, who is founder and medical director of the Center for New Medicine in Irvine, California and also works daily with cancer patients. Dr. Keneally, so nice to see you in person after our Cure to Cancer Summit, welcome. Welcome, thank you so much. It's just a pleasure to be here, Jean. And yes, 3D, there's nothing like <laughs> the real thing. <laughs> exactly, live in person in front of people around the world. Dr. Keneally, every year 12.7 million people are diagnosed with some form of cancer and close to 8 million people die every year. Why are the numbers more staggering now than ever. Yes, it is staggering. There are, in the U.S., because I know that we're talking about the world, but in the United States, one out of two men have cancer today, and one out of 2.5 women have cancer. And that may even be changing in the years to come, because we are living in an environment that is not conducive to the survival of human beings. If you look at medical problems across the board, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, it's only increasing. Despite all the efforts, despite all the research, despite all the charities, despite all the testing that has been done, we have not made the progress in medical problems, whether it's cancer or heart disease, diabetes. So obviously what we're doing and what we're delivering is not working. What do you think might be some of the answers that could improve our knowledge and ability uh, to, to help people with these diseases? Well, first and foremost, we are what we eat and drink. So our diet today of what we're eating is basically processed dead food. And so if you want to have pure energy, you have to eat pure energy. And today people are eating most of dead, inactive, devitalized food. So food does basically directs the chemistry of our body. Our body is a biochemical machine. Yes, we walk and talk and feel, but we're a biochemical energetic machine. And if we don't eat foods that nourish, strengthen, and heal the body, 
then we can't heal ourselves. We have this internal milieu in our body, the garden of our body. And if that is not in homeostasis and balance, then our body cannot repair and heal itself. And our body has a magnificent healing system in it. And it starts with what we're breathing, drinking, and eating. And we're eating foods that don't have healing power. They don't have nutritional value. They don't have energy value. That's number one. Number two, our body is already 70% water and we are drinking water that is polluted. And it is polluted beyond anything that people hear about or read about. We're not informed properly. And the only reason I know is because I research this information all the time and there are medical conferences delivering this information about what is happening. Hi there, welcome back. Felicity, let's just go through some of the statistics, okay? Um, 12.7 million people are diagnosed with cancer every year. This is now in the US, okay? That's just the US. Um, 8 million people die from cancer per year. One in two men have cancer, and one in 2.5 women have cancer. The prevention is key, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, unfortunately, in the last 50 years, you know, <clears throat> there are so many new chemicals that have been invented. And it's really since the end of um, World War II that these chemicals have started to be used. They're put into our drinking water, for instance, in the fluoride. Um, you know, there's a great controversy about that. Babies are now born with so many chemicals in their blood. And they've done a very interesting film on that. And, uh, you know, I read all this research and I'm just appalled. And the information should get out there. And of course, these babies are then vaccinated with a whole lot more uh, heavy metals, you know, mercury, cadmium, all kinds of stuff that goes into the vaccination, which we're told, you know, will protect our child. And so when I had my babies 40 years ago, um, I would go and dutifully have them vaccinated as well, uh, thinking it was entirely the right thing to do. And if people are interested in that, I mean, you've got to go to the doctors who are talking about this, go to Dr. Vernon Coleman, who's written a fascinating book, um, which I've been researching. And, uh, you know, you need to listen to the experts, really, before you just follow the line, like all the rest of the sheep, and, and uh, go down the line of having the child vaccinated. Because we always thought, how wonderful, once they're vaccinated, they're not going to get these diseases. But um, it turns out there is a different story. Research is key, and knowledge and education is key as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And never has there been more information available if people will only take the time to go and look at it. Um, I mean, I love it when Philip Day comes on the shows because uh, Philip has spent years, in fact, we spent the same time researching, but Philip has made a business out of it. I was just a mother who was absolutely devastated at losing my child, my husband, several best friends over the years to cancer and researching it from that point of view. And Philip, of course, has realized that the supplements are vital because our food is now um, made from land that is so devoid of minerals. And so I used not to think that we needed selenium and zinc and all these extra supplements. I used to think they were a waste of money. Uh, but I now realize that because the soil is so deficient, in fact, we do need to have them but you've got to have them from a source that you really trust because again, a lot of money is being made out of selling the wrong things. And so um, you have to go with a, a Christian company that you really trust, I think. What are the key supplements that you would advise? Well, you see, we're all short of magnesium. Uh, magnesium is what relaxes the body. It, it, I think nearly every organ, every function in the body needs magnesium. We need zinc. We need vitamin C, we need vitamin D, especially in countries that don't get much sunshine, and especially for people with a darker skin, because the people who've come from Africa and the Caribbean to live in England need much more vitamin D, because that's how their culture is, they are used to having that. And um, so many people are really devoid of vitamin D in the body, and we do need the sunshine. I would much rather 
obviously sit out in the sun and get my vitamin D than uh, swallow a pill. But I'm now actually taking the supplements as well because I realize in the winter, even here in Spain, uh, we're not getting enough vitamin D. Mm -hmm. The vitamin D builds the immune system and our health entirely depends on the immune system side. You know, so we need the vitamin C as well, which builds the collagen in the body. So that helps every single cell in the body. Also prevents cancer, because when the collagen is strong, it means that cancer cells can't invade into the next cells in, in the skin, in the collagen, in the tissue. So um, I've really learned the hard way, and I'm absolutely amazed at how quickly I got well you know, in eight months, my pancreatic tumor, which was huge in the head of the pancreas, just disappeared into a scar. I've still got the scar. And um, you know, the cancer is not the tumor. The cancer is a systemic thing that's in the body. We're all fighting off cancer cells every day. And it just depends how strong the immune system is as to whether we get the lump and the bump or we fight it off. Now, the most important thing in most of our lives is children, is our own children. Yeah. What would you advise is the best way to protect our children? Well, I think uh, you have to be very careful what you feed them, uh, right from birth. Of course, the, the breast milk is ideal because that gives a great immunity from the mother to the baby for a start. And then you start uh, getting them onto the green juices, onto the carrot and the apple juice. You know, I was feeding my children from these little commercial pots uh, which were very convenient, but at the same time, uh, it wasn't uh, the, the real thing, like the mashed banana, the mashed avocado pear. So with the grandchildren, you know, God has given me another chance, and I'm able to get them into their broccoli, and you know, they love it, and they love growing the wheatgrass. And on my Facebook page is a picture of my grandson and granddaughter growing the wheatgrass, watering it, and uh, you know, they're growing up with that, thinking it's natural. Fantastic. Okay, well, let's take a look at our next clip. This one is discussing about the importance of water. Water, that's something we need every day. We need at least half our body weight in ounces in water. And we're drinking water that is polluted, contaminated, and acidic. So we have to have systems in place to deliver proper water. Then, what are probably the most horrific thing that's happened in the last hundred years is the drastic explosion of toxins in the environment. Everything we breathe, the water we eat, drink, the food we eat is all contaminated. And if you, I test the, the environmental pollutants in a lot of my patients, because a lot of my patients, I go, oh, well, you're, you're, I'm sure your body's toxic. And they go, really, my body's toxic? They look at like, wow, what does that mean? And, and what does that mean to me? And I say, okay, well, let's just check your heavy metals. And then when they get their heavy metal test back and they go, oh my goodness, so how did this happen, Dr. Keneally? And I'll go, well, if you look at every piece of chocolate has lead in it. Our rice is tainted with arsenic. We have cadmium. We have aluminum in the air. We have mercury in our fillings. We have mercury in our fish. We have mercury in vaccines. So we are getting exposed to this. But if you look up the scientific facts of what these heavy metals do to our body, then we would understand why we have the disease that we have. Now, we also have the number one pollutant in man today is plastics, phthalates. And you can simply do a urine environmental pollutant panel to determine what pollutants you have in your system. And it's good to know because you need to know where, you need to measure things so you can know, okay, yes, I'm improving. But why do we have plastics? Well, plastics are not biodegradable. And people use plastics for everything, from their water bottles, to the food covering, to the bread covering. I mean, think about it, cheese, everything is coated with plastics. Our fish now, National Geographic did a special called the Plastic Ocean. So these are causing severe endocrine disruption in the body. So we are seeing the outcome of the extreme uh, exposure of pollutants. And I tell people, whatever's going on in China is happening here. 
So what is China? One of their number one things they do is they burn coal. Well, what's the biggest byproduct of coal is mercury. And so you don't have to just eat fish. You don't have to have just fillings. Just breathing the air today is extremely polluted. So when we have a patient that comes in, we do a full evaluation of toxicity and the burden and load of toxicity, and then we start cleaning patients up. Hi there, welcome back. Felicity, the importance of water. Absolutely vital. I mean, this was what caused my daughter's death. So obviously I'm very, uh, very exercised about that. And um, what I do is uh, purify the water, even if people just have a simple Brita uh, filter or reverse osmosis or distilled water. There's all kinds of different ways of purifying water. Um, I'm doing a lot of research at the moment on alkalized water. In fact, that is not worth spending the money on. Uh, terrific marketing. A lot of money is uh, put into marketing these things. You just want to get the purest water you can. Remember that the plastic bottles off-gas a certain carcinogen. Um, so, you know, we don't all live ne next to a mountain stream. <laughs> we have to all compromise. We have to all do the best we can, but certainly filter the water as much as you can. Um, I also put um, oxygen drops in the water. I have a little, a little bottle of oxygen drops, and I actually put it in to oxygenate the body and to... Um, bring oxygen into my cells because you know at 73 you're getting um you're getting quite tired you've been through a long toxic and stressful life so um i have to keep my energy up and i find that wonderful so uh, i drink a lot of water i get the um the special vitamin c in a powder form which you put into a big bottle of water and i just make sure that i drink that first thing in the morning so I will not leave my bedroom until I have drunk that. You see, we have to give ourselves a goal that yes. we can achieve. Yeah. Now, when I see the bottle is still half empty, I know I haven't done it. So I make myself drink that down. So I rehydrate in the morning. And, you know, people can do the little bit of bicarbonate of soda. You can put a little bit of the fresh lemon juice, which, funny enough, turns into an alkaline ash, as they say, in the body which sounds a funny thing, but anyway. Some people, for example, might not like water and they need a little bit of flavour to it, isn't it? Exactly. So put a little bit of fruit with it and then you get into your juices. And, of course, the vegetable juices are better for us than the fruit juices because of the sugar content. Going back to water, what is the ideal amount of water we should be drinking a day? A glass every waking hour. I, you know, I like to make things simple instead of working out um, you know, body weight and everything, just a glass of water. And so for little children as well. Little children have a much more sensitive thirst mechanism, you know. They'll come and they'll say, oh, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. And so they're not going to get any caffeinated drinks from granny, I can tell you. Um, and they're going to get the natural juices that I make with them, which are vegetable juices, basically. So we're doing the cucumber, the celery, and sometimes a little bit of apple, carrot, but basically it's a good uh, natural juice with no added sugars. Also exercise, the importance of exercise. When we burn off the fat, we obviously, once we do a workout, we're very thirsty and we drink lots of water as well. Yeah, so you want to make sure you're getting pure water at that time because the body is saying, gosh, I've really worked out now, I've lost a lot of water. Uh, in the perspiration. So you want to be very careful what you put in. And if you go to a pool, of course, you're in chemicals because they've got chemicals in the swimming pools. The safest swimming pool is an ozone, ozonated pool. But um, if you've been in a swimming pool, then you should go and shower. And you should have at home one of those shower filters, mm -hmm. which uh, you just screw it into the shower head and then the water that you shower with afterwards is pure water. It's practical and inexpensive solutions, isn't it? Yeah, because you see, we absorb a lot of water through the skin. So it's, it's really interesting. And uh, we just have to take intelligent action, as my dear old dad used to say, intelligent action, where we do our research and we really take care of ourselves. Because sure as eggs are eggs, 
no one else is taking care of us. Absolutely. Everyone's making money out of us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Okay, let's take a look at our next clip. This is the ways that we can test for cancer. What are some of the most important things everyone watching needs to know about cancer? Well, I always describe cancer, um, it's this uncontrollable uh, growth of cells that have gone wild and crazy. And I tell patients, imagine your body's had an earthquake. And your body, in an earthquake, everything's in chaos. And cancer is a sym symptom of disorder in the body. And we've got to create order and homeostasis. And people think, oh, I have breast cancer, I have ovarian cancer, I have colon cancer. And the doctor starts attacking the cancer. Cancer is a disease of the entire body. It's a sim symptom of disorder in the body. And so when we go on the attack of just attack attaching just the breast cancer, we're forgetting that we're a holistic system and that we need to treat the whole body. Dr. Keneally, which cancer tests should people know about? The cancer test that everyone should know about is, first of all, what they should go to their regular doctor for. So when you go to your regular doctor, you want them to check your C-reactive protein. That's a very important marker. It's called high-sensitivity C-reactive protein. And that's a nonspecific marker for inflammation. And if you recall five to seven years ago, Newsweek and Time had on the front page inflammation because inflammation is the precursor to all diseases, Alzheimer's, heart disease, and cancer. So it's a very simple test. And if you have continuing levels of elevated C-reactive protein, the doctor should be looking for cancer. Now, the second other blood test that I love to do, and I do frequently, and I really like to say that this is a great test to do if you want to know if you're simmering, brewing, or fermenting cancer. Because as you know, from one cancer cell to the tumor is 10 years. So prevention is priceless. So this test is done by American Metabolic Laboratory, HCG. HCG is the hormone of pregnancy. It's also the hormone of malignancy. Now your doctor can order the blood test at a regular laboratory. And then if you want elaborate testing, you can order a cancer profile that we do in our office. And it's a very simple blood test, and it checks for two subunits of HCG in the blood, one in the urine. It will also check for an enzyme called PHI. Now, PHI is an enzyme that is elevated in anaerobic conditions. Anaerobic means low oxygen. Cancer thrives in a low oxygen environment. It also will check one liver function, one thyroid function, a non-specific tumor marker called CEA, and it also um, will check for DHEA sulfate. Now, DHEA sulfate is your hormone of stress, immune, and longevity. Now, the other blood test that has just became available in the last year is called Oncoblot. And now, Oncoblot will detect the cancer in very early stages also, I would say about year seven or eight, and it checks a special kind of protein that exists on cancer cells. And so if you think you're suspicious or say like their chest x-ray or an MRI or CT says, oh, there might be something, you might want to do that test to see. Now, it tells you a little bit later than the cancer profile, but it's still a very, very good useful tool to see if cancer is uh, happening in your body, and it'll also tell me exactly what organ it's associated. So if it's breast or lung. So it's not just telling me that it, there's cancer brewing or, or simmering in the body, but that is actually uh, what organ it's associated with. Hi there, welcome back. I just mentioned some of the points that was uh, discussed there in that clip. Um, the body, if the body had an earthquake, the body is in chaos. Cancer is a disorder in the body. Yes, that's right. And, you know, we're living in a perfect storm because we've got the, the um, electromagnetic radiation around us. We've got the bad food we're putting in our body, the fizzy drinks with the sugar in. You know, people will buy a packet of processed fruit juice and think they're doing themselves good. In fact, they're just putting a load of sugar into their bodies and preservatives. 
So this is why we have to come back to doing the homemade juice. Mm. And you can either do a blend, you know, with the little cheap Nutribullet I've been talking about, or you can get a more sophisticated juicer. Obviously, the more sophisticated, better juicers will give you better value in your juice and less pulp. Um, it just depends, you know, people can blend or they can juice. Having been so ill myself, I juice and I know that my body needs that refinement. Um, I can't handle a lot of the extra pulp, but then I make the pulp into little flax seed burgers and things as How well. How do you make that? Explain. Well, you have to have something called a dehydrator. And, you know, we've all thought, I don't need a dehydrator. I can do it in a low oven. <laughs> but in fact, you can't. And so um, you can make these little flaxseed crackers, which are delicious. And you do them with garlic and onion and lovely things. And uh, you can try and dry them in the oven, but you'll keep burning them. And so in the end, you need this, this box, which is a bit like an airing cupboard, you know, the airing cupboards we used to have, which just blows the warm air. It's usually next to the boiler in someone's house. And it just gently dries out the food without going over 100 and 105 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which actually kills the living enzymes. So it's all scientifically correct. And so, I mean, you could put things in the sun. <clears throat> For instance, you could dry, like the sun-dried tomatoes, you know, yeah. delicious. I think the key here as well is, um, is eating, eating raw and eating healthy can be delicious. Oh, it is. It's the most delicious food in the world. It really is. And uh, I've now been 25 years getting to the stage I am now with it, where I really prefer my own food at home. But of course, I like to go out. I like to be with friends go out for Sunday lunch and so um, I will go out and I will eat I will be selective you know I'll have a maybe a soup or a melon to start with and then go on to a big plate of vegetables which are cooked and beautifully done the chefs know if you tell them you know you're on a special diet and uh, they're really interested in giving you really lovely vegetables and um, you know, enjoy it when you go out because we're meant to be happy as well as a right. spiritual and psychological yeah. side to health, hugely important. Because it's, it's the importance of changing your diet but also the maintaining of the diet as well, isn't it? Because we have so much temptations. You see, even if you did 51% on the right diet, Si, what a huge difference yeah. that would make. You know, they say if um, we could absolutely get rid of breast cancer completely in women, if they took 200 uh, milligrams of the uh, selenium and cut out, say, antiperspirants under the arm, because most breast cancer comes in the outer upper quadrant of the breast because people are blocking those vital lymph glands coming up with the toxin into the armpit, as they're supposed to do, and we're blocking that with antiperspirant. So what I use now is the coconut oil which is a wonderful deodorant. It's antibacterial, antifungal. Um, it's also anti-inflammatory. And, um, you know, that is a perfect anti... It's a deodorant, and, uh, but it's not an antiperspirant. So you have to go and shower off, and then you put on the deodorant, especially when you've been for a workout, as you're doing now and I'm doing. Uh, it's really important to go and shower off and get rid of the toxins because the joy of the sauna and the exercise is we're actually getting rid of the toxins through the skin and not just relying on the, uh, the bowels and the bladder to get rid of the toxins. Just explain to me a point that was mentioned in the video, the cancer takes 10 years to develop. Yes, you see, that's really interesting, isn't it? The thing is that uh, so many people are just uh, terrified when the doctor says, oh, you know, we can see this is a um, a positive uh, test here with cancer and you know you must have chemotherapy next week sort of thing and you've got to realize no this has been happening a long time you've got to do your research and decide really what you want to do if you want to build your immune system um, or if you are advised and you realize through your research that you need to have chemo and radiation then you go to the best place to do that but always with an eye to building the immune system 
because in the end uh, you can shrink a tumor with chemo or radiation. The best it will do is shrink it down temporarily, but if you don't stop making the cancer in the body, it's going to come back on you. Um, and also the, the cancer testings, um, C-reactive protein, um, HCG. Explain to me about these, please. Well, I mean, they're so, it's so interesting because that's a plain, uh, just a urine test, and I learned about that uh, many years ago after my daughter died, I realized instead of all the tests they put her through, which were, some were very painful, some were horrible. And um, in fact, this is a urine test. It's so simple that if someone's positive, they're either pregnant or they've got cancer. And so this is a, a urine test that um, is done with Dr. Keneally and can be done by anybody. Okay, well, let's take a look at our next clip. This is a continuation of how we can test for cancer. Now, let's say that there's, you find there's some findings, whether that your doctor tries to figure out, and so they're not sure that you, if you have cancer still happening in your body. There is a blood test called circulating tumor cells and circulating stem cells. And those are the tumor initiating cells and responsible for 95% of metastasis. So let me give you an example. Let's say you had colon cancer, and the doctor said, I did the surgery, I removed the six inches of the colon, and you are cancer-free now. So we want to make sure that you're cancer-free. And the way we do that is we check for circulating tumor cells and circulating stem cells, done by a laboratory in Greece called RTCC. Because you want to, the only way you can determine a cure for cancer when that circulating tumor cells circulating stem cells is zero. Yes, thank you for those, um, those, that great information where people can really do some early screening and, and avoid potential disease. Dr. Kinley, what are some of the really great uh, innovative new uh, cancer treatments? I know that you use conventional, alternative, uh, integrative. What are some of the new treatments that you'd like people to know are available now? Well, first of all, let's talk about the treatment that exists today. The conventional treatment is surgery, chemo, or radiation. And we've been doing that about 50 years. And Nixon declared war on cancer in the 1970s. And so we have been on a odyssey of discovering what is going to cure cancer. The death rates, unfortunately, are the same as they were in 1970 and the same as they are in 2014. So we have not improved this situation at all. So, not only me, but many other people are saying, what else can we do? Well, there's lots that a patient can do, and there's lots of, that other doctors can start doing and initiating. So, one of the things that the first and foremost thing is educating people on their diet. So, as I said earlier, your diet dictates and tells and instructs the cells how to take care of themselves. That's number one. Number two, when a patient is seen for blood testing, I do a very, very exhaustive blood work. Are you diabetic? If you're diabetic, you're much higher risk for cancer. If you have low vitamin D levels, you're much higher risk for cancer. If your DHEA sulfate is low, you're much higher risk for cancer. So I do a very, very extensive blood work, not just checking your chemistry and your CBC, but doing a very elaborate profile, doing a toxic evaluation of the patient because if you don't know what the patient has, you can't properly treat them. Now, in our practice, we use some very, very wonderful treatments. We use something called insulin potentiation therapy with chemo. That is using chemo at a very low dose, 10%. We administer the patient insulin, and insulin acts like a Trojan horse or an escort to bring the chemotherapy into the cells. Because what do cancer cells like? They love sugar. And so if you bring the blood sugar low, and create this therapeutic moment. You bring, give the patient the chemotherapy, the cancer cells are hungry, and then we drop a bag of sugar and the cancer cells eat the chemotherapy. So you basically, you're trying to get the cancer cells and not damage your regular cells. So that's one treatment. The second treatment we do is IV vitamin C therapy. The National Institute of Health discovered that IV vitamin C kills cancer by creating hydrogen peroxide, which kills the cancer cells. So that's something that we regularly give all the patients. Then we do something, we use a laboratory 
in Greece called RGCC. And that laboratory started 10 years ago. And what they do is they, first of all, measure, if someone has cancer, they measure their circulating tumor cells and circulating stem cells. Now, that is not the only laboratory in the world that will determine that number. In the United States, I was performing them, but I always got zero. And I'm like, well, I know this patient can't have zero because I knew their history and it was impossible. So that's why I sought outside the United States appropriate laboratory testing. And RGCC has the highest laboratory certification in the world. And so I started sending my blood there and getting a circulating tumor cells and circulating stem cells because that's what's responsible for 95% of metastasis in the body. Hi there, welcome back. Felicity, very interesting. Cancer cells love sugar. Mm, they certainly do. And so do most of us love sugar. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. You know, we, uh, we've been, over the years, we've got more and more addicted to sugar. And we now know that, you know, there's so many teaspoons of sugar in a Mars, well, any of the chocolate bars, whatever. Um, there's sugar in the fizzy drinks, mm -hmm. there's sugar in the processed juices that we buy, there's sugar in all the foods. That's why they are so addictive and so delicious. So when we start actually preparing our own food from scratch, you know, the onions, the garlic, the um, the vegetables and the fruit, we can we then realize exactly uh, how much sugar there is in these things. We know a sugary fruit or maybe a, a pear, uh, which is less sugary. Bananas, of course, have huge sugar content. So we can start taking control of our sugar content and then cut out um, the added sugars from the chemical foods and the processed foods. Mm -hmm. So then we start to cut down and immediately you'll get um, a great improvement in health and energy because actually a teaspoon of sugar knocks your immune system out for four hours. And so if you think someone has you know, a coffee with a little sugar in in the morning and then at lunchtime they have something else with a little sugar in and at tea time they're having another cup of tea maybe, um, they will actually knock their immune system out for the whole day. At the end of the day, Felicity, um, if we want to look after our health and our lifestyle and our future for ourselves and our children, we need to be radical and we need to just clean everything, all the bad things out of our life and drastically change our diet? Well, once you begin to know the knowledge, you see, it's like the taxi driver, learning the knowledge. Once you learn the knowledge, you start being so interested in this. And then, of course, you bore everybody rigid because nobody else has followed the head knowledge yet. And so they're just um, cross because you're changing their diet. So what I love is when people come on my course, I have the husband and wife together, mother and daughter together. Uh, you have to have um, the whole family really involved. When you understand what you're doing to the body with food, then people will do it. They are, have to understand the why before they understand the how. Let me just talk to our viewers out there and say, why don't you give it a try? Give it a few days, give it a week. Change your diet, try a raw vegan diet, try the juices and just see how you feel. I have to say I changed my diet, Felicity, since doing the programs with you and I just feel so different. I feel I have so much energy. I feel great, I really do, I really do. And right. I'm not just saying that because I'm on TV either. <laughs> That's wonderful, Si. Yeah. I'm just so thrilled that people are taking it on board and I have all these wonderful emails from people, you know, saying, you don't know how much you've changed my life with, uh, you know, I've lost two stone, I've got, I'm not diabetic anymore, mm -hmm. you know, with stage two diabetes, which can be cured by the raw food diet, as we know from Dr. Gabriel Cousins, within three to five days. I mean, it's amazing. But then people are in a boot camp environment yeah. where there are no Mars bars around the corner yeah. and packets of Galaxy in the suitcase, you know. But it's lovely, Felicity. We get emails um, into our show every week from our viewers to say how they've changed their diet and they feel so much better for it. So it's excellent all around. As I say, even the little change will yeah. start and you'll start to get more energy and you're also taking more exercise. Okay. 
Well, let's go to our final clip for today. This one is talking about cancer cells. Go, you get the lumpectomy, and the doctor says you're cured. You're only cured if that circulating tumor cells and stem cells is zero. And that's published in the oncology cancer book just in the last couple of years. So lots of people don't know about it because it's a rather new uh, finding and new discovery. So we will send your blood over there overnight, get your number, and then when we want to determine which chemo to t put on you, you have to know what chemo to give because maybe on your cancer, this chemo doesn't work. So it comes back with this elaborate panel of 49 chemo agents and it tells me specifically, this one works better than this one, and it tells us what cocktail we need to use. Then it checks everything natural that works on cancer. Like we know green tea is wonderful for cancer. We know resveratrol. We know vitamin D. We know curcumin. We know quercetin. We know genistein. All these substances. But work works best on you. Individualized, personalized treatment, because every individual is an original. No two breast cancer, no two colon cancer patients are the same. So you have to customize the treatment. And then what you do with these agents is you set up a protocol for these patients, whether it's chemo, if you decide to do chemo. And if you need the natural things, you do the natural, but you rotate these things. You don't keep patients on the same thing all the time. You rotate them because you're trying to outsmart the cancer cell. Now, the other things that we utilize in our practice, we use lymphatic drainage. So we have light beam generator with, uh, with ozone. We do lymphat manual lymphatic therapy. We use infrared sauna. We use hyperbaric oxygen, because I mentioned earlier, when your body is in a hypoxic, low oxygen, it is the perfect environment for cancer. It's not only a perfect environment for cancer, it's the perfect environment for your cells to not function and be paralyzed. So it's very important for us to get adequate levels of oxygen in our bodies. Now, so we have, we have our patients do hyperbaric oxygen. Now, we also do something called ultraviolet blood irradiation. And what that does, it takes your blood out, irradiates it, which basically sterilizes the blood from all the bugs, and it augments the immune system, and then we will add ozone to it. Because, again, ozone, if you look at a lot of uh, things that are used worldwide, they use ozone to sterilize. We even use in this country now ozone to sterilize things. So it's a very powerful tool for oxygenation and cleaning up the dirty bugs in your body. Um, and then we do, have, we do have some new therapies that we have started um, utilizing the RGCC Greek lab, um, which is uh, new and on the horizon. And um, it's basically a oligonucleotide therapy. And that's basically taking the patient's cells and um, we basically reverse engineer them to create cancer cell death in the body. So it's a very, very uh, unique uh, treatment now available, non-toxic, no chemo, and it, it's not changing anything in the body in an abnormal way. Thank you for presenting so many options for our viewers. Dr. Keneally, what are some of the biggest misconceptions around cancer? I think the biggest misconception in cancer is that people think they're cured. And the five-year survival rate, if you do surgery, chemo or radiation, is 2%. And doctors are not informing patients of that statistic. And so we, we, we want to make sure you're cured. And the only way you can determine if you are cured of cancer is that circulating tumor cells our circulating stem cells, also called tumor-initiating cells, are zero because that's what's responsible for 95% of metastasis. So patients often come into me after they've had a diagnosis of cancer, and they say, Dr. Keneally, I don't ever want to go through that again. Can we make sure that I am cancer-free? And so I go on a discovery journey to determine if they are cancer-free. Hi there, welcome back. Felicity, I just want to see your thoughts on chemotherapy. Well, uh, chemotherapy destroys the immune system, as we know, but sometimes we have to use a little, especially as Dr. Contreras says, uh, if it's in the entrance or exit to the body, because time is of the essence. The patient is going to die of the blockage 
uh, unless that blockage is shrunk down. And so um, he uses uh, the high potentiated um, chemo, so he can use about 10% of normal chemo, but it's targeted right to the area that it needs to reach. And so, um, you know, we, we include it. This is why it's called integrated health and integrated cancer treatment, uh, which means that we use the best of the orthodox, the chemo, the radiation, the surgery, put together with the common sense of the, um, the, the common sense things of the exercise, the uh, nutrition and the pure water and uh, trying to get rid of the electromagnetic radiation in the body, all these things that are you know, coming together in a perfect storm to cause cancer in our bodies. So we put the whole thing together and it's interesting that um, you know, the, the natural remedies like the far infrared sauna, for instance, where people can sweat out toxins, the hyper thermography where they heat up an area of the body to, you can still bear it, I mean, it's just very hot. And they will, because heat also will, mm. will uh, kill a cancer cell. Oxygen kills a cancer cell, so they have oxygen treatments as well, like the hyperbaric oxygen treatments which uh, they used to use for, well, and still use for divers with the bends. So there's lots of natural things, we put them all together. I was going to ask you about what are the uh, other natural remedies or natural treatments that you'd use. They mentioned green tea in the clip there. Anything else that you'd recommend? Yes, there's a tea called Essiac, which is E-S-S-I-A-C, and that's an old Indian herbal recipe that was being used for thousands of years curing cancer. Uh, down in the sort of Florida area, which was originally Indian, and now um, they're using the Essiac tea. There's a nurse called Rennie Case, C A I S S E, and she just reversed the, initial, the, um, the letters of her name to make Essiac tea. Mm -hmm. It's got all kinds of herbal, natural things in it, which really do uh, a wonderful job in getting rid of cancer. Finally, Felicity, I just want to just want to ask you the importance of having God in our life. Well, of course, it's absolutely vital, and that's why I went to the Christian Cancer Hospital, which is in Mexico, called the Oasis of Hope Cancer Hospital, um, started by Dr. Ernesto Contreras, and now run by his son, Dr. Francisco, who is a very dear friend of mine, and who I'm going to be meeting again in San Diego on the 25th of April. And, I mean, he is a wonderful Christian, who, uh, he's a great oncologist, he's trained all over the world, and he's also preaches when he's in the hospital in Mexico, when he's not traveling, he actually preaches on a Sunday. And when I was there for, for two weeks, he preached both Sundays on the gospel. It's absolutely amazing how people get well from a spiritual and the mental perspective of knowing that God is all part of the cure, that He's given us an immune system which we can get together again. Uh, we can restore our wonderful immune system. And it's really important to put our trust in God to do that. Fantastic, Felicity. We have just got literally a few seconds now left till the end of the program. So thank you so much for, for joining us today. Any final words? Well, I think the people that come to this are the frightened and the enlightened. And hopefully we'll get lots of enlightened Revelation viewers who will learn uh, from these top doctors who are introducing every, every week and uh, will learn to prevent cancer in the first place, how much better that would be. Thank you very much, Felicity, for joining us today. Thank you also to our viewers. We've covered a number of um, videos today on our, chat, on our program, so please visit revelationtv.com on our website where we have a catch-up service. Thank you viewers for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you same time next time on Revelation TV. Take care, God bless and have God in your life because without God, what else do we have? All right, take care, God bless.